Hello all, I know it's been a while, but we are back and we are blessed. So uh, today we will be uh, actually performing maintenance on the Epson 7890 and it's a, it's a little or a lot a bit different than the smaller format printers because this is a commercial uh, printer for archival uh, media, you know, for printing. Uh, posters and things like that. That's what it was originally used for. Uh, so today I'm going to actually show you how to perform maintenance on this beast and this should work the same I believe for like the Epson 7900, the 7880 and the, uh, some of the other models that uh, feature the DS, DX5 and I believe the DX6 uh, print head as well. Uh, so stick around and let's get into it. Okay, so I know this is a weird angle, uh, but I have to assume that uh, you're you're about to run date your daily maintenance. So you would normally have this um, roll of film loaded. So I have to give you all of the steps. So firstly, what you would want to do is you would want to release this platen so that you could roll the media up on itself because we're going to have to actually paper a piece of paper towel basically along the track uh, to clean the surface of the print head as well uh, and so you don't want that film to be in the way and once we enter this mode that I'm about to show you how to enter uh, that won't be the time to try to do those things so we want to make it easier on ourselves okay so I don't know if you can see me well. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll this back on itself. Until I see it clear. You don't want to get cleaning solution on the film. And so now we will power the printer off and get ready for the next step. Okay, so now that the, uh, the, the film, the roll of film is free from the track, uh, we are going to enter a uh, repairman mode. So all that would be, this doesn't have to be in any particular order, but you want to press the arrow down, okay, or press and hold the arrow down, okay, and menu button, and then just press the power button. Keep those three buttons held down until you see uh, the the prompt on the screen and then you can let them go so once you see that it seems as though there's an error don't be discouraged you haven't done anything wrong just give it a second to initialize and I've run cleaning solution through my lines because um, I have a couple of surprises for you guys here in store uh, but more on that later uh, but basically I have cleaning solution already in my lines so my printer may not even need a cleaning but I can still show you how to perform maintenance on this just the same okay so this repairman mode is actually a mode that a technician would actually use so at the menu here I hope you can see well Okay, looks good on the camera from my angle. So you're going to go to maintenance and we have to trick the printer into thinking that I'm an Epson technician and I need access to this uh, carriage so that we can freely slide it. It's not as simple as the smaller format printers where you just, you know, the desktop printers where you can just unplug it and, and then do it. So we have to trick the printer so we can do uh, the pump exchange. Oh, I'm sorry. So, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so we can do the, I believe it's the wiper exchange sequence. All right. And now we can see, I don't know if you can see that, but the print head is moving over. So it's not, it's no longer docked. 
So from there, we and don't hit enter to finish. What we're gonna do is unplug the printer and you'll see this error mes message, but I want to show you this. Never be alarmed of this. It's just part of the process. It says fatal error, but there's no fatal error. So now what we can do is we can access uh, something you've probably never heard before, or you may have, but it's called the spitting box. And I'll explain that while I'm doing it to, for the sake of time. Okay, so we're going to lift the cover here. And just to get this head out of the way, uh, we're just going to push this over here just to move the, the ribbon cables and the lines and everything so that we can access this area here. So uh, this printer has what's called a spitting box. So you'll need to pull this down to access it. Now, uh, the capping, or the, the wiper blade is here, and the capping assembly is a little bit further. Uh, you'll have to move it up uh, so you can see that here in a bit. But what this does is it actually allows the printer to keep printing continuously without stopping. So if you have one of the uh, smaller format printers, what you would see is that It'll, the print head will move and it, it will stop every now and then. This allows it to dump, do a quick dump, if you will, uh, of ink into this screen here so that it could continuously print. So you have to think about what this printer was designed for. It was designed to print long runs without stopping uh, or banding. So this is actually what makes this printer a beast, this little spitting box here. But what will happen with DTF printing is that the white is a little bit more dense. And so you don't want that white ink to start to congeal inside of here. So we need to clean it. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. So we have our cleaning solution here. And again, I just have some piezo flush and I cut it with distilled water and we're just going to draw some solution. You might as well do a full deal. You won't actually uh, put all of the solution in at one time because what will happen is it could possibly leak down here and you don't want an issue like that. Uh, you probably could just put like a piece of a cloth or a paper towel down here, but um, if you do it gently enough, you shouldn't get any errors or anything like that. So what we'll also need, and you need to go ahead and have this handy, is you want to fold a paper towel around, you know, a little bit larger than the area of the spitting box. And you want to fold it over to where it's pretty absorbent. So I think that's pretty good. And you actually might as well fold a couple more to ensure that you draw all of the cleaning solution out as well as the inks. And if you're wondering how often you should do this, I wouldn't say every day. Uh, if you have quality inks, so let me stop myself there. Uh, if you have quality inks, you shouldn't have to do this every single day, but it will be wise to check it. And if you can start to see ink, the colors, fill that spitting box, then it's time. It's almost like when they say when you're dehydrated, when you when you feel like you're dehydrated, you've, you've been dehydrated. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, it's kind of hard for me to do this and allow you to see. So we just have this blunt tip, use whatever you have, but I just feel like you get more control with this. So we're just going to, in essence, inject cleaning solution into the screen and you can see it started to pull but it hasn't dripped down and we're just going to press pretty firmly don't be too harsh on it and you will see ink and cleaning solution draw up 
just as you would with carpet. So we had a little ink in there, but I've had, as I mentioned before, I've had cleaning solution in that. I'll do this one more time, but you know, I just don't want this video to be too long. I, I would like to get to the point because I know I do give you guys side, <laughs> side information that you probably couldn't use. So I just want to be a little quick about this. So this is pretty much clean. I know this is clean, but do this until you no longer see ink fill the paper towel, but you're not done yet. So the next step would be to clean the wiper blade. Now it is very important that you do not, uh, that, that you put this in the way, the same way, the same orientation that it goes in here because if you do like I did months ago, what will end up happening is when the carriage goes to make a pass to access the spitting box, it'll pop off and fall on the inside of the printer. And then you've got another issue on your hand. So there's actually a little button here. It's hard to kind of do it without. There we go. So you want to press up. Because I'm trying to make it to where you guys can see. So this is the wiper blade here but it doesn't look like a normal wiping blade so we're gonna get our foam swab here dip it in the cleaning solution and you want to be very gentle because depending on when you're watching this video these parts might not be readily accessible you can still source them now but you you might be watching this video five years from now and I'd hate for you to damage this and the parts are a little harder to come by at that time. So I've got some ink build up here. And so I'll probably fast forward this. Okay, this is a teachable moment. So if this flips down, it just pops right back into place because that's the position you want it to be in uh, once you actually uh, replace it where it needs to be. Look at all that gunk that builds up. So imagine if you never clean this thing. Imagine if you just print it every day and you know use the out of sight, out of sight, out of mind approach, and all of all of a sudden you just hear a big clunk. And it's because it's scraped across the print head because they, you know, all of the ink has congealed along this wiper blade. They may not even call them wiper blades anymore. It's probably just called a wiper now. Okay, this is good enough for me. I say that, but I got a little OCD. So it's good enough for me for the sake of this video. So you want to just get this all the way clean. Make sure it's back in that same position here. And you're just going to place it back until you hear it click. Remember, with anything plastic, if it's too hard to force, just stop and really evaluate it because if you hear too big of a click, it's a bad thing. So now we need to, I'm sorry, I have to remember I'm explaining this to you. So now you need to push this assembly all the way up so that you can access the capping station. You got a lot of channels in here. There's a lot of ink being dumped there. That's why this guard is here. They already knew, you know, Epson already knew that you would get a little ink there. Now for this, you do not want to, or I, I recommend that you do not inject anything or you know, you can, but just, I mean, you could really damage some stuff. So I'm just going to tell my subscribers to be very careful. So you're just going to dip and you actually want to kind of block this a little bit if you're using a foam swab and you're just going to very gently run this across the capping station 
on each channel. And again, if you are doing, running this maintenance for the first time because you didn't know how, that's okay. You know, we're all here to learn, even me. So uh, if you see, oh, perfect. I was just about to mention this. I didn't think I had any. Let me see if I can get this without it. I can show you what's happening. Okay. This is where your daily and your weekly maintenance comes in into play. Look at this gunk. So you won't have a proper seal if all of this gunk builds up over time. And so, you know, you have to just think about protecting your investment. So even with piezo flush, I'll do this while I'm talking. So even with piezo flush, I know it could be expensive, but it's like you spent thousands of dollars on this printer, so why not spend a little bit extra to protect that multi-thousand dollar investment, you know? So some things you can skimp on. I've, I've heard of people making their own cleaning solution out of things. Well, I'll probably touch on that uh, just so I can steer people in what I believe to be the correct direction. Uh, I guess I can do this a darker uh, color so I can do this. I can use the same swab on a darker color but on the yellow I will use a fresh foam swab. Uh, but yeah to get back <clears throat> to what I was saying excuse me uh, there are people that say hey you know I make my own cleaning solution and it's been fine and I use Windex. Disclaimer never use Windex. Please I could go in depth, let me know if you want me to, but please don't use Windex to clean your printer ever. Uh, but that may work for them and that's okay. But why try to make your own cleaning solution? See, there's some more gunk. Why try to create, you reinvent the wheel basically. You know, why try to create your own cleaning solution and damage your thousand, you know, four thousand dollar printer, eight thousand dollar printer, because you wanted to save a few bucks, and then that in turn affects your business because you can't fulfill orders now. So just get in the habit of thinking, you know, should I just go ahead and do this? You know, follow the instruction of people who have been doing this for years. Uh, but you don't have to. This is your business, so I don't want it to be a rant or anything. I just have a lot of people watching my content now, apparently. And so I have to do my due diligence in helping you avoid the same potholes I fell into 10 years ago, 11 years ago. So we're just about done here. It's enough talking. Got all of the gunk off. So now we are not done. This should be part of your daily maintenance Maintenance in terms of, so we're gonna slide this down. So, oh no, this that's fine. It, it'll move itself. Um, so, it can stay there. But, actually I just thought about this. This may not work the way I'm thinking, but we'll see if it slides down or not. So now what we are going to do is we are going to clean the surface of the print head. Before, but before we even get to that step, I'll show you how to correctly do this. Now I have, you know, that was my solution. I'm working on that too about covering the vacuum holes. Uh, but I have tape covering my vacuum ports because that's worked for me. Uh, so I don't know if this paper towel is going to slide down, but we're going to do what's known as the paper towel method and the still got that gunk on my gloves the paper towel method in the printing world so this actually might need to be a little bit smaller but that's okay so we're gonna fold this and you may have to if you have a full length paper towel you may have to cut it in half and then fold it over 
I think more than three times in the print head, you get a little bit more, uh, I don't know, friction or abrasion, and you don't want to damage that head. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually saturate this paper towel. We're not going to add it to it. We're not going to place the paper towel under and then add the solution as some people will tell you because you could trigger a a um, what am I trying to say a waste pad error because it would th you know if you get solution on the inside of your printer it could basically make the printer think that you spilled, you know, that the, the, the main, the waste ink counter is what I mean. The waste ink counter will censor that, uh, you've actually, it's life has now expired that the pad is full. So that is why we add it first, but not to the point where it's dripping. You see it's, it's holding its absorbency. And now this may or may not work, but you know, I like my videos authentic, so you'll see it live. Everything can't be perfect. So, because I placed this tape here, we're gonna see if this will work still. So, we are gonna place this on this track right below the feeding roller, or those are guide rollers. Wow, okay, <laughs> in the state, I guess we're okay. Great, okay, so now we are going to move. You can grab it here. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm grabbing it here. And you're just going to slide this. Yeah, see, that tape makes it a little bit thicker than it should be, but I'm gonna try again. So you're basically wanting to slide the print head over this. I think with that tape, it may not work. So, okay, it's kind of working, but what I'll do is I'll fold my paper towel twice, but I want this to be authentic. I don't, I don't know everything. Okay, so now we have it to where both sides, you can't see the right side, but both sides of this paper towel are uh, visible. So we're going to do almost like a shoe shine, I guess method where you're pulling up just gently and we're just shining a shoe essentially and you may need to get another paper towel and do this a couple of times but now you want to do two things slide this back and see I just purged my lines so there's not much ink you know, haven't run ink through the printer in over a month but there's cleaning solution in these lines so it's gonna fire right up so two things you want to slide the print head back and you want to actually examine your paper towel because if you know if you see if if you notice rather that there are pieces of the paper towel missing you know to do a second pass until you see those little bits or it's actually stuck to your print head and we don't want that so that concludes the maintenance on this here I hope you can see my face. So this has been a ride. I have some inks that were sent to me for free, given to me for free to try. Uh, new premium ink from Kingdom DTF. So this, you know, my videos are very planned out. So I'm going to show you the regular Kingdom DTF inks in case you still want to use that and show you the new premium inks. And I haven't used them before. Uh, so I also have uh, big boy ink that's coming pretty soon uh, one of my subscribers actually he's an up-and-coming supplier but I've heard great things about his products and so we're gonna load his inks into the 7890 and then we can run some prints so that you guys can see it up and running and so that it can benefit my shop so thanks for watching my content a thousand subscribers the one of the next videos uh, will be very great, but once I'm monetized, if you guys can help me get the watch time up, I can't even believe I'm asking y'all, but please subscribe. I didn't care before, but this is growing, and I want to give back to the community, and to do that, uh, we need resources. So uh, 
not 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 asking you to donate anything or any money or anything like that uh, but if my videos do benefit you please give them a like uh, put it on a playlist or something so that you can access them when you need them uh, and I will be uploading at least one video a week that's my goal so if you don't see a video next week uh, child not challenge but uh, hold me accountable in the comments remember I'm here for you guys so I've talked and spoken for long enough uh, so with that stay tuned for what's coming if you guys can help me get that watch time up there and I become monetized, I have a video that's going to rock the DTF world. And, you know, I don't have an ego or anything like that. But for you, you guys that have been following me from the beginning, when I create this video, it's going to take off. But I want all of the, the resources that are generated or the, the income that's generated from the YouTube ads, I want them to be given to me so that I can offer you guys, I won't even get into that, but uh, basically I'm networking with people, trying to boost this channel, and once I'm monetized, just wait and see, it'll speak for itself. So I've spoken for long enough, uh, and as always, stay elegant.